called 911 in the US for an emergency that was going on in Guatemala. And what did they tell you? I was mad because they were like, um, ma'am, you have to get, like, you have to go international. There's nothing I can do about your daughter. Three hours. But I'd never see you guys again. You were? You were freaking out? A little bit. What were you thinking? What was going through your head? I'm ready to die. You're about to die? <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Please excuse my hair. It's a little bit, you know when your hair is like still drying? I just washed and did my hair and it's still drying so it's wet and it's dripping on my shirt. So Sorry if you see my hair dripping. Uh, it's still wet and drying. I wanted to ask you guys if you could please vote for me for best travel vlogger. I was nominated for a shorty award for best travel vlogger, which is insane. And I think I'm the only black girl. No, I don't think I know I'm the only black girl. And I just think it would be really cool. It takes two seconds. Um, you can click the link that I'll put down below and it takes literally two seconds to vote and I visited 100 countries. Um, last year and not last year because i can't I keep forgetting it's 2020 almost two years ago but it's like it was it's just 2020 so it was like a year and a couple months ago i visited 100 countries in one year on a challenge and it was a lot of hard work but it's like paying off <laughs> it's paying off which is amazing and yeah it'd be really cool to win the award and go to the shorty awards which are in May and being on the red carpet and wear a gown and that would all be so cool. It would be my first red carpet. Okay, anyways, but anyways, like I said, if you're interested in voting for me, then please click the link down below. Um, it would mean a lot. Thank you in advance. If you vote for me, you're literally an angel and I thank you. So I have been in two shootings, <laughs> which is crazy i've talked about i don't know if i've talked about the one i'm going to tell you about before i'm sure i did um maybe briefly or maybe i didn't but i have talked about the first shooting i was ever in when i was like 18 years old um i am from new jersey and i'm from see i've moved around as a kid so i don't really ever know where to tell anybody i'm from because we moved like every year <laughs> as a child i've lived all over new jersey and the new york philadelphia area so but i have most of my life lived in south jersey but the country part where you know everybody's everybody was christian i was raised christian i am still a christian um but i was raised around all christian people everybody i was raised around was christian um, and just really low key. There was never any crime where I was from. Um, I remember like I didn't find out about sex, sexual things until I was literally in late years of my high school um, because I was homeschooled and we didn't talk about that stuff. Um, it took a long time for me to find out about the human body and anatomy and all that stuff parents don't want to talk about um, because my mom just never touched on it. So I was raised very prude, like I was very much, I don't know what the correct word is to use, but I was just raised very sheltered or anything like that. So when I went to college, I was very much a little kid still. Um, and i remember i was so excited to go to college i went to college in boston and it was so exciting for me because it was the first time you know i was going to be away from my family and i'm on my own and i'm in college and it's, it was such a different environment i had been to boston once before as a kid but i had never been into the city and so i go to boston and it was like such a cool experience because I had never been around a place like that before. Anyways, I immediately get a job straight, I think the week after school started. Um, 
I got asked, somebody came up to me and they were like, I work at Forever 21, I'm a manager. I remember him, Justin, and he, he was a manager there at the time. And he was like, you need to work at Forever 21. You're so stylish. Um, do you live here now? And he's like, it's on Newberry Street. Do you know what Newberry Street is? At the time, I didn't know. He's like, do you want to work at the Forever 21? It's a great job. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, sure. I literally started working the next day. And it was just so cool to be in that dynamic of having a job, having my own apartment, and going to school and living completely alone. It was I was feeling myself. Okay, let me just put it that way. Forever 21 wasn't like a job. It was like school. There was so much drama. It was like its own little community. It was like there was cliques. There was cool people. There was, you know, the nerds. There were like the outcast. Like there was, it was such like high school again. I always say that. So much drama and there was definitely cool people and not cool people. And since I was a new girl, everybody was trying to get me to be like in their group. Um, and I ended up picking the popular group to be a part of, which is just so stupid. And the popular group were the group of girls that I knew I wasn't supposed to be hanging out with. Um, it was very obvious and they were nothing like me. And I just chose to hang out with them because it was a good look. It was cool. And these girls were like a hot mess, a actual mess. And... If you're currently in high school, don't hang out with the girls that you know you shouldn't be hanging out with. Even in college, don't. Even if you're gonna look cool or whatever, just don't do it because it will end very badly. You'll be put in situations that you have no business being in. So long story short, I start hanging out with these girls on a regular basis um, and they're putting me around things that I am not used to. I was going to parties with them just because they said you're going to this party with us and they're I don't okay I don't smoke I don't drink I don't dance like in a party setting it's just not something I do it's not something I want to do and they take me to parties like twerking parties where like all the girls are like shaking their butts and they'd be like nudging me like come on dance and they'd be like look that that boy wants to dance with you go dance on him and I'd be like and I would never do it. I would never do it. I would always be that girl, always, that would be sitting down on her phone, looking miserable while everybody else is dancing because it was just not my scene. No, what the heck am I gonna dance on somebody for? Anyways, and there was always some sort of fight after the party, but it never got into shooting until this one time. There's this all white party that you need to go to. And I was like, no. I'm kind of done doing parties. I was trying to distance myself from these girls and I was like, you know what? No, and they're like, no, you're going. Um, you're going to this party. And I was just like, whatever. They're like, it's an all white party. We need to find you an all white outfit. Um, it's gonna be so much fun. And I remember going, so we, we got to the party and again, I knew nothing about Boston. This is in Boston, knew nothing. I didn't know where the bad parts were. I didn't know where the good parts were. I didn't know if I was in an extremely dangerous neighborhood and I didn't know I didn't know anything. This party was in a very dangerous neighborhood where there's shootings all the time. If I were smart, I would have looked that up and made a smarter decision. But I didn't. Um, I remember the girls were really pressuring me into wearing something very revealing. Although I wasn't never that way, and I did. Um, and I did it, which I was the complete idiot in my college days. <laughs> I'm only 24 now, but I'm talking about like my freshman year of college. I was just the biggest idiot on earth. Um, but so I hung out with these girls and we went to the party. And I remember I always found it weird. There was no security at these parties, no security at all. I'm like, so anybody can just walk in at any time, any moment, do anything. There was no security. And... I was already feeling very unsafe and then the party was pitch black like I could stick my hand out in front of me and not see it like the party was there was no lights and it confused me it just confused the heck out of me and um, so I already was and it was in the 
dead of winter, like freezing cold. And I remember we came in from the back of the party and I personally, since I know I'm not gonna dance on any people, I'm not gonna dance on anyone, I'm not going to dance period. This is not my thing. I literally have not been to a party since. Not because I'm scared, it's just not me. I don't like partying, I like other things. Um, I'm gonna stand near the exit door. There was an exit door all the way at the end of the, it was like a fire hall. There was like an exit door all the way on the other side, opposite the entrance we came in from. So I was standing near the door, the exit door. This is kind of what saved my life, okay. And so the party's going on and people are dancing. It's literally pitch black in there, pitch black. And so I open up the door, uh, I stand near the door and all of a sudden all I know is there's like a stage, right? And there's people standing on the stage also dancing and there's like girls twerking up there and just being a mess. And there was boys up there like getting danced on and some of them had microphones. And all I know is the music stops and then the guy got on the mic and he says this, you guys, so he said something like, you guys enjoying this all white party? And everybody's like, yeah. And he's like, well, it's about to be an all red party. And I'm like, I immediately knew something is not right. Next thing you hear is, right? And at first, nobody screams because you never think that you're in a shooting. You just never think you're going to be in a shooting. Well, at least me, because I'm, I, have, I have never been in th those type of environments. So I'm thinking they're fireworks at first. I'm like, there's no way. And then I look at the ground and I see people on the ground that were shot. Like, I still have the picture in my head um, of a girl scooting across the floor. Um, she was shot and I saw blood on the floor. Clicked, those are gunshots. I did not turn back once. I did not turn my head. The only thing I looked at was the floor to see the girl, all the people on the floor. I never, ever, ever turned my head all the way around to see who was shooting. My mind immediately went into panic mode. Not panic mode, but like, how am I gonna get out of this situation mo mode? And I just remember being trampled um, it took literally everything out of me. I was literally standing right near the door, to, right near the door, but since the shooters came in from the back, everybody was running to the exit door that I was standing right next to. So I was being trampled and I remember thinking in my head, like if I'm not going to die from being shot, I'm going to die from being trampled. And whatever I can grab just to push my way out of there, I finally make it, I remember, my whole stomach had a scrape on it because I was wearing a belly shirt, kind of. My, my stomach was a little bit out and I'm scraping my stomach against the like very bottom of the door to get out and all like the skin on my stomach came off. It was terrible. So, I, so right when I exit the door, I see people running and those people, I heard them getting shot at. So I'm like, they had shooters on the outside too. So all I know is I keep running and running and running and running and running. And I don't think of anything. I don't hear anything. I don't feel anything. I'm just running. And I look down and my right foot is covered in blood. Completely covered in blood. And I'm like, okay, what's going on here? What happened? And I look at my leg. I look down and that's when the pain hit me. Because before I didn't feel anything. The pain hit me. I look down and I see that I was shot in the leg, but it was, the bullet had fallen out of my leg. Um, so all I, there was just this very deep, deep, deep hole in my leg. So I immediately start freaking out, panicking, thinking I'm gonna die. So I break down and I'm on the floor crying, not the floor, but the ground outside, looking a mess, half dressed, just looking crazy in the freezing cold. And this guy sees me, he was just walking his dog. Um, he sees me and he takes off his coat. There was a shooting. 
and I was shot and I'm gonna die and I'm gonna die and I'm gonna shot and I'm gonna be and I'm freaking out on him, freaking out. I remember he puts his coat on me, he picks me up and he runs with me to the closest, they call it the T in Boston, but the subway, the metro. He runs me to the closest metro, the T stop, and he puts me over the gate and he's like, she's been hurt and all these people run over to me. It was a huge scene and I kept asking people, can you please beg, I was begging people, can you please just put me on a train? Cause I just wanted to get far away from there and they're like, no, you're gonna stay here and we're gonna call the ambulance. And I'm like, no, put me on the train. I was literally screaming cause all I was thinking was like, I'm being followed, they're gonna come after me. I don't need to stay here, I need to get out of here. So just put me on the train. I just wanna take that, ride that train all the way out of here. I wanna get as far away from here as possible. They're like, no, we're calling the police and you're staying here calling the ambulance so they made me stay there and i remember getting on the ambulance and i went to the hospital they sewed me up we went to the police station the police told me um you know why were you in this situation we have daughters you know stop trying to be it's so funny because they knew exactly like i knew they were telling me a message from god because they um were saying exactly what I needed to hear. They're like, stop it, trying to be cool. You're not like the rest of these girls. How did they know? That had to be God telling me, you know. Um, they're like, you're not like the rest of these girls. You're different. Stop trying to be cool. Stop trying to be someone you're not. This is a wake up call. Use it as a wake up call. You're gonna be okay. Just stop hanging out with these girls. I never hung out with those girls again. Um, and I never wanna be in that situation again. I remember I was in the back of the police car um, and I was just bawling my eyes out and I was like, I know I'm not in trouble. The police were taking me home because we had to first go and tell the story at the police station. We, after going to the hospital, they, me and three other girls were taken to the police station because we had to, you know, tell the police what went on so they could help find, you know, the people who were shooting. And um, so afterward, the police took us home. And I remember I was like, I wasn't in the back of the police car because I was in trouble. I was back there because they were taking me home. But I just remember I was bawling my eyes out crying. Just like, why? I never want to be in the back of, the, of a police car ever again in my life. Like, I don't care. Like, this is terrible. This is my fault. I shouldn't be back here. I'm half dressed, covered in blood in the back of a police car. Like, this is just a mess. And it didn't need to happen, you know? And the police were like, they were the kindest men ever. Two white guys, but there were three white guys that were talking to me, but the two two white men drove me home, not that it matters what color they were, but they were like, we have daughters your age and we know, we can tell just from talking to you that you're not like the rest of these girls. Stop hanging out with them and just go to school and do your schoolwork and you'll be fine. And that's what I did from now, then on. I was going on a challenge to visit 100 countries in one year. I didn't care about is this country dangerous? I didn't care about uh, is this country poor? Is it a good travel destination? Is it, I just wanted to get to as many countries as possible. And that's, I had laser focus. Um, I had a laser focus about traveling to these 100 countries. So I remember I realized through the challenge that I needed help and I had my brother start traveling with me. He came out of school. He was 15 at the time, he's now 16. He was 15 at the time and he dropped out of school to come help me with my challenge to help film take my pictures to help me with just help he was 15 and i was 22 at the time or 23 i was 22 about to turn 23. i was 23 halfway through the challenge now i'm 24 this was only a year and a half ago anyways so i remember we my passport ran out because i had been to a lot of countries already so I had to get a new passport, so I had to come back to the US. So I said, I came back to the US, where I'm from, <clears throat> to get a new passport, and then I said, okay, from here, I'm just gonna go straight down the line. I'm gonna start in Canada, so that's what I did. I started in Canada, and then I flew to Mexico, and then I literally took a bus all the way through Central America. I bused to every country. Did I know that, the Central, that Central America was extremely dangerous? Sure, I knew. That I know that they're extremely poor countries with kind of not so great of justice systems at the moment, you know, and it's not so safe. Yeah, I knew, didn't care. So I was busing to every country from Mexico. I took a bus to, you know, all of those Nicaragua, Belize. 
I, this is all on my channel by the way Guatemala, bust through all of them and I was in the most dangerous parts of Guatemala and Belize and Nicaragua and Honduras um, I remember the next day after I left Honduras there was a coup where like a lot of people uh, there's coups all the time where they try to, you know, the people try to overthrow the government and there's like huge march. Anyways, I didn't care. I, I, I love danger and adrenaline these days. I didn't when I was younger um, and I didn't care. And I was like, you know what? You cannot escape danger. You can't. There's danger in every country. So I'm just going to chase my dreams and travel and not let fear hold me back. So that was my mindset. So we're in a very bad part of Guatemala and yes, I'm aware about this. I'm aware we're in a very bad part of Guatemala, but I'm like, whatever, we'll be fine. So me and my brother are just staying in this mom and pop owned hotel. Good morning, Guatemala. Well, just big day, big day ahead of us. Got a lot of working to do. I gotta take six pictures. I gotta do two videos. We gotta book our thing to El Salvador. We gotta walk to the grocery store. We got stuff to do. We gotta work. 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 Come on. Let's see what outside's talking about. Mm. Oh, it's very tiny. There might be 20 rooms. Um, it was very beautiful though. And I remember we were there for a little bit because it was really cheap and I had to figure out how to budget 100 countries. So when I found a cheap hotel in a cheap country, I stayed there for a little longer so we wouldn't run out of money as fast. And so we were in this really mom and pop cheap type of um, hotel. And I remember that day we had seen so many men counting tons of money. And I have the footage of this because I asked my mom, my mom, I was sending my mom videos the whole time about everything that was going on and I asked her if she still had the footage and she sent it to me so I have the video I have the videos and everything I sent my mom so um, let me open it up okay so yeah I remember okay hold on, not that, that's too early okay so I remember we saw all these men in like white button-ups at the hotel and they all were counting I mean stacks of money, ridiculous amounts of money. And I was like, this is off, something is not right. Why are there so many men here at this random mom and pop hotel? They're not even staying at the hotel and they're counting ridiculous amounts of money. So I remember whatever, we just like whatever, we went to sleep. sleep. And I remember it, wo it woke me up first. It was about five o'clock in the morning. I start hearing gunshots and a lot of them, right? So I'm like, there's not, that is not gunshots. Like, there's no way this is happening again. And it sounded kind of just like the gunshots I heard when I was at the shooting, when I was, you know, in a freshman in college. And I was like, there's no way. So then I remember a second round went off and I heard a lot of people screaming, right? And I remember since I'm an idiot, I crack the door open and I look out and I see these girls that looked like they were half dressed, they were half naked, half dressed, half naked, whatever you want to say. Glass is half full, half empty. And they grab like a bunch of clothes to their chest and they just run away. I'm so confused. I'm like, right? Close the door. I'm debating whether I should wake my brother up because he's 15. What's going on? wake him up anyways because i'm like we might have to take a run make a run for it i tape it and i send it to my mom right she starts freaking out panicking the only reason i sent it to her i know she's a panicker she's a, she's a big time panicker um especially when it comes to her kids she starts panicking she says like get on the floor don't make a noise and so me and my brother get in the shower i don't know why and we kind of lay on the floor of the shower just in case gunshots came our way we wouldn't be hit with one the gunshots go on on and off for maybe three hours literally three hours and um, I'm sending my mom the videos the entire time and I don't know like me and my brother just aren't afraid of anything I don't know where we get it from I'm gonna ask him if he was afraid yeah. hello 
I'm doing a story time about Guatemala, the shooting. Yeah, so were you afraid when we heard the shots? Uh, somewhat. Somewhat. You were? You were freaking out? A little bit. What were you thinking? What was going through your head? I'm ready to die. You're about to die? <laughs> Low key, that was going through my head as well. That's why we that's why we ended up sending the video to mom, right? Uh -huh. Just in case it was like our last time we talked to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then, okay, I'm gonna tell him later, but we got over it pretty quick, right? Yep. The being scared, right? Uh -huh. I told you guys, I told you guys, we're not scaredy cats, Jesse and I. That's probably why we didn't care. Anyways, I'm gonna finish the story, peace. Peace. We, um, so we hear the gunshots and then maybe a half hour goes by and I'm telling you, this is the morning time, right? So it's maybe nine o'clock by the time the gunshots stop. Maybe nine, 10 a.m., right? My mom's calling us. We told her to stop calling us because we're like, we don't want the phone to ring and they know we're in here and they shoot us, right? So we leave the hotel room after we hear the gunshots stop for like a half hour, right? And there's like three rooms in the hotel where the door is wide open. There's a ton of money on the floor and there's nobody in there. So we're just like, yeah, there's probably a shooting, right? We're like, but me and my, me and my brother are like, should we leave? What should we do? And I remember every morning there was a cook. And there's just one cook and you told him what breakfast you wanted and he made it for you. So we look down and we see the cook is still there. We look everywhere else, there's nobody around, nobody. It seemed as if everybody had left their hotel room. So we're like, but well, we're hungry, right? So we go down and we ask the cook, did you hear those gunshots? And he goes, yeah. And I goes, so what's going on? He's like, well, do you know you're in a very bad area of Guatemala? And I said, yeah. And he's like, it happens. So me and my brother were like, so you've heard this before? He's like, for sure. And I was like, so are the people gone? He's like, I hope so, I think so. And I'm like, nobody else is here. I was, he's like, yeah, yeah, we know, I know. So we're like, what do you suggest us to do? Leave, do you suggest us? He's like, well, yeah, if you're afraid, you should definitely leave Guatemala. And so I remember that day I booked us, our bus to get out of there and to the, on to the next country. And I said, but, until tomorrow, there's not much we can do. And he's like, yeah, I guess. He was so low key. So me and my brother were low key and we're like, okay. So we're like, can we have breakfast? And he's like, yeah. He starts cooking us up fruit and the food in Guatemala is just ridiculously delicious. He starts cooking, cutting us up all this fruit, all this food. He cooked us up so much food because nobody else was there. Everybody had left. So I remember me and, jo me and my brother, Jesse, we just sat on the porch and ate breakfast relaxing uh, my mom calls back she's like what are you guys doing and we facetime her and she sees us eating breakfast and i remember she was just she was already exhausted emotionally because she had been crying and freaking out and my mom's husband said that she was rolling on the floor floor praying and freaking out i heard ask her she literally called the police in america sister hello hey, hey. i'm filming my video where? Um, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted, didn't you call the police in America about a shooting in Guatemala? I called, I called 911. <laughs> she called 911 in the U.S. for an emergency that was going on in Guatemala. And what did they tell I you? Mad. I was mad because they were like, um, ma'am, <laughs> you have to get... Like, you have to go international. There's nothing I can do about your daughter in another country. Right. I'm like, okay, somebody better do something. <laughs> oh, darn. And me and Jesse just sitting there eating eating breakfast. <laughs> no, I thought I'd never see you guys again. Yeah, we thought so, too. We were like, dang, we about to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so scared. But did I think I was about to die? Maybe. I don't think this, I don't, the last thing I want to do is to make people afraid to travel. 
you cannot escape danger. It's all over the world. It's everywhere. I'm from America. America is incredibly dangerous, you know? So, and I know a lot of you guys are from America. So, it would make no sense to not want to travel to escape danger. Because danger is here. It's everywhere. It's literally, you can't escape it. You can't go anywhere and be safe, you know? Most crime doesn't happen to travelers. Most crime happens to people living their everyday lives. People going to the grocery store, people going to school, people in school. You know all those pedophiles in school, school in our school systems, people being stalked, sex trafficking. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. You cannot escape it. So do not think you shouldn't travel because you're afraid. Don't be afraid because you can always make smarter decisions. You don't have to go to the most dangerous parts that I went to. You don't have to go there. There are beautiful, very safe places in Guatemala and in Central America. Um, the same thing like in the US. You can go to super dangerous areas. You can go to not so dangerous areas. Um, it doesn't matter sometimes, you know, Thousand Oaks and the place where the, where the school shooting was in florida where they killed all those kids that guy killed all those kids in school those were known as two extremely safe places so you cannot escape danger to me i know a lot of people don't believe in god but i also do know a lot of people do believe in god if you do i think you should trust him to take care of you because that's the only real way to have any security in life is to believe god protects you that's the only real security other than that you're all just fending we're all just fending for ourselves I don't want to fend for myself. I don't want to be in control of my own safety. I just want God to protect me. And that is what he does because I trust him. And so he does. He says if you trust him, he'll take care of you. But you have to trust him. I trust him. It's working out for me. We were not shot. We got out of, Guata we got out of Guatemala safely. Um, and this is nothing against Guatemala as well. I love Guatemala. Incredibly kind. We had a delicious breakfast. And a cool story to tell so anyways that's all i have to say and i'll see you guys in my next video let me know i would say let me know your thoughts down below but let me know your thoughts down below <laughs> and i'll see you guys in my next video